In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about world space, local space, and object space. Uh, when I double click over here on my move tool, let me close this window and reopen it. So if, if you don't have that open, you can double click on any of these tools to bring open the options for them. And if you notice up here at the top, there is object, local, and world. And these are different ways you can transform this object. And this, this has to do uh, between what you're seeing as far as your gimbal control here. Your gimbal is um, your XYZ axis here for either move or rotate or scale. I think those are a little bit small in there. And how it's dealing with the numbers here in XYZ space in the channel box. Um, so what I've got here is um, three objects to kind of represent those different spaces. We have this giant sphere down here to kind of represent the world. That uh, Think of it like world space is always relative to your scene. So this little XYZ orientation thing down here in the, the left corner is how the world is oriented. And you'll notice right now everything is oriented the same way, that Z is facing the same way as down here, X, Y, and, and so on. All these objects are all currently uh, oriented in world space. Um, but we're also on world space, so that means even if it was rotated differently, it would still be on world space. And let me start to show you this so that actually starts to make sense. So what I'm going to do is parent this cone under this torus, and I'm going to parent this torus under our giant sphere slash world. And you could already see, so actually, let me undo that so you can see this real quick. And I should... Let's see, is that... Nope, oh, one more time. Let's do it manually. There. So, if you look right now, everything in here is zeroed out, scale is 1. Everything in here is zeroed out, scale is 1. Um, my giant earth has some numbers on it because I've moved it down and scaled it up. You know what, I'm going to go reset those. And I can do that by uh, freezing transformations. And... You'll notice it stays in the same spot. The transform tool, you know, somewhere way down in the middle of the sphere. Um, but everything's zeroed out now. If I want the, the the transform gizmo for it to come back up, I could reset the transforms, and now it's back at the origin of the world. So this point here is zero zero of the world. If we go look on our front top side views, you can see this black line. So this is you know high school algebra geometry plotting on a graph x y z. Uh, kind of stuff. So that's our zero point. So let me go back and start to parent these under. Um, and, and the reason I got numbers before was I hadn't frozen transformation. So these all became relative to uh, the sphere, which is what we'll get to here in just a second. So world space. We'll, we'll use the analogy of this is the Earth, like you standing on the Earth. Um, Imagine this cone represents you, and this ring is some sort of vehicle that you're in, traveling in, flying around in. Um, if I start to rotate this ring and move it, the cone stays relative to the, the torus. It, it hasn't moved relative to the torus, it's moved the same way. And if you actually click on just the cone, it's still zeroed out. There's no numbers on it. But there are numbers on the torus because we've moved it relative to the world. And uh, if you'll notice the gimbal here is still oriented to uh, the world space. And if we move it, only one number at a time is changing up here. So if I go Y, only Y is changing. If I go X, X is only changing, Z is only changing when I move that. Same if I rotate it. Um, we're going to switch over to local now. And when I switch to local space, you'll notice it doesn't change here in, in this case. So for the torus, it hasn't changed. And what local space is, is the same space as its parent. And so when it isn't parent to anything, it's the world. And in this case, we have our, our proxy world, which hasn't moved. Um, but if we look at the cone now, before, if we were on world space, if we were just on the cone, you know, it's still lined up to the world. But if we go to local, it's now oriented the same way as the torus is. And you'll notice when we move it in local, it's it's still doing one axis at a time. But let me go back and undo this. If I, I was in world and move just the cone, 
Notice how it's moving all three? That's because it's it's looking at its relative space to the torus, but we're moving it local, so it's it's doing some math for us to deal with that translation. But allowing us to move it relative to the world, if that's the way we want to move it and just, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, that's fine. Or if we want to move it relative to the torus. So let's go one step further. So we've, we've rotated the torus. Let's go ahead and we're going to reposition this cone. And now it has transformation information relative to the torus. So it's its home point is wherever the torus is. So the center of the torus is where it considers its 0, 0, 0 point for translate, rotate, all that. And now that we've rotated it, um, while we're in local, you can see it's still, well, we have to get an object. Object's the next one. So here, here's where it's just to get a little bit confusing trying to explain, but I think as you play with it, you'll start to see what's going on. So object gives us however the object itself is oriented. So the transform gizmo is lined up to however, you know, this object was initially positioned in world space, and as we rotate it around, the gizmo rotates with it. So when we look at the cone, this is how we've rotated it, and the gizmo is still proportional to this. But again, if we move it, because this isn't lined up with the torus now, when we move in this space, we're getting all these kind of numbers. So why would you want to use one of these versus another? Um, and this, this has to do with positioning things, and it has to do with animating things. So it may be that I want to position this a certain way. So maybe... Let's, let's go ahead and zero back out this cone. And this is, let's say this is the position I want the torus in, and I want to rotate the cone. So we're going to call, you know, that that's the rotation I want. If I was on an object and I tried to move this, uh, it'd be very hard to keep it still centered inside the cone, or uh, inside the, the torus. So it's, it's very easy to move out. But say I needed to position it again, but keep it inside the torus. Well, if I went to local, now I can do just that. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to think about the math to keep it inside. So this is where switching around between these different things can be very helpful. You know, so there's times you'll want to move something in, in, you know, only side to side. I, you know, I know I'm say in a flat shot and just looking at my front view. I want to be able to move this just an X because say this is my camera shot and this is where it lines up the best. Um, and I can switch around and have different ways of moving it, so I don't have to kind of do this oh, a little bit that way, a little bit that way, you know, moving all three. I could, I could change those different things. Um, but we have to sort of think about animation information on top of that. So if you're animating this, it's only going to look at the local space. So uh, this torus will only, look, you know, have information here, x, y, z, relative to the sphere. This cone only has its x, y position relative to uh, whatever it's parented under, in this case, the torus. So let's go ahead and see. I'm going to go zero this out so we can get some nice clean data out of this as I animate it. So I'm going to hit a keyframe on frame one here. I'm just hitting the S key. I'm going to go over 10 frames, and I'm going to move it up, let's say, three units. I'm going to move it over three units. And you'll notice I'm doing this in local space. So let's go look at our graph editor here. And you can see the translate x information that I added. So it's saying start at zero and over 10 frames, go up three units. And same with the y information, because I used it, moved it over three and three. So that's really easy to read information. I could I could tell what's going on there. I could mess with my graph curve and say, you know, a little bit more constant speed. You know, maybe I don't want it to go up three. Maybe I need it to go up four or so. You know, somewhere around there, almost five. And that's really easy to edit. I know that's going to go straight up. Now, let's go back and I'm going to go ahead and delete these keyframes. And say I tried to do that with a different... Uh, a different space. So let's say world space in this case. So now we're we're different than oriented different than how the torus is. And I'm gonna try to 
you know, maybe I'm not moving it in just Z and X and Y, but maybe just eyeballing it. But you'll notice I'm getting all three transforms at once. And that gets me slightly different graph info. So now I've got to deal with these slightly inaccurate bits. And, and this comes up more in orienting joints and setting up rigs where, where this will matter more, um, specifically on an elbow. Um, and let's just jump over to that actually real quick here and start to show what the issues are with that. So I'm going to make an arm here. And I've just kind of quickly done this. And let's say, you know, that's my elbow. Ideally, your elbow should be able to touch your shoulder. So it should be able to do, you know, something like this. And actually, I'm going to put a local space there, too. So it should be able to do something along the lines of that. But you'll notice I had to do it, like, in three axes there. That's not particularly animated or friendly, and again, if I have to do that while animating. Okay, so for one really simple motion, whoops, uh, you know, I've got these three graph, I have to move this in three axes now to get it to go touch its shoulder. Um, and if I need to tweak this, you know, watch what happens when I start moving, well, that's not the best axis to start with, you know, start moving one axis at a time to try to change the position. It's it's not quite as easy to get it back up on the shoulder because it's not one axis. And I have to kind of go do this back and forth thing of like Z, X, Z, okay, a little bit more Z here. Okay, so you know I'm doing it in multiple dimensions at the same time, which is really kind of confusing. So I'm going to go here, let me just zero this all out again. There's easier ways to do this, and so we got to be aware of our uh, world space and local space and all that, because when we start getting things like orienting LRA as our local rotation axis, uh, this allows us to change how oops, the arm is set up. So I'm going to set this up in one axis here, and because I'm moving in local space, oops. I can get this to touch the shoulder now with only one graph curve. I don't have to deal with the other ones. So this is a whole lot easier to animate, especially when I have to go back and edit it. Um, so this is jumping ahead a little bit in lessons, but um, you know, starting to give an idea of, of why this is important. Um, you'll, you'll notice here that we have kind of the same thing in rotation, but we also have gimbal, and I'll talk about uh, that in a lesson about gimbal. Um, but Get get familiar with this. You'll you'll notice actually here where this is positioned. Um, it's not the best view, but we, so we have local space. It's oriented the same way this joint up here is. So if I was on object, we see how it's oriented, and when we come down here, go to local, it orients the same way. So there may be times where I want that, so I could say extend this arm out farther without changing the position. So this thing is still aiming straight down, like if you're you need to make your elbow a little bit longer. Um, so it stays within your arm, but you're not accidentally moving it out. That's a good way to do it, just switch over to local space. Uh, but now, let's say I need to edit this elbow. Now I jump back into object space. Um, so being familiar with object space, local space, and world space can be really useful when you start working on building joints or even your models and how the parent hierarchy works in animating those. Uh, so hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight in how that works. Um, and as we do more lessons, these will be common features that we are using all the time. So thanks, and I hope that made sense.